Welcome to DXB Today. Thank you so much for joining us. We are going to give you our usual dose of entertainment. Plus, we have education on our minds today. One famous band once said, you don't need an education, but one would beg to differ. It depends on who you're learning it from and the technique of learning it. So, we're talking about micro learning and online learning. So let's find out what's happening else on the show tonight. Amy heads down to Andaliman, the only high-end Indonesian restaurant in Dubai to check out their flavor-packed sambals in an interactive dining experience. And as always, we bring you talents from around the UAE right here in the studio. Sophie Magali is going to be in the studio a little bit later on. But for right now, micro learning and online learning. Now, I'm of the age that I didn't do any online learning. I pretty much finished everything by the time that uh, distance learning was a thing. But micro learning, I absolutely love. And I get most of my education from TikTok, weirdly enough. Uh, Lane, uh, I know you're younger than me. Did you do any online learning? Uh, well, I've done a little bit of online learning and I learned a little bit of that from my children. But I'm with you, micro learning is fantastic. That is one thing that I find, um, I think everyone needs. Really? Is this because, you know, when, you, when you're at school, you just sat there, you're studying for hours on end. It's nice to just get little doses of information as you go about your life. I think you can absorb it much better. Absolutely. I mean, obviously, I'm also of that age where I've never had to do any online uh, or distance oh, stop learning. It. Yeah, I know. It's, it's hard to tell, but, you know, it's just good genes and Botox, really. But, um, yeah, so I've never had to really do online learning for myself, thank goodness, because I'm not sure how I, you know, because I'm a little bit distracted by nature. Um, my focus level is not particularly great. But I have sat through online learning with my six-year-old. Lane, I know you have kids as well. I'm not sure if you've had to sit with them um, through the online learning classes. What I'm trying to say is that I'm better than all of you all because I've had to go through that. <laughs> and uh, kids actually like it, you know, like it. They, they, they find it quite nice. My daughter particularly enjoyed it, especially when we had the rains and the schools were closed for a few days. She thought it was funny to see her friends in a little, you know, window on, a, on her iPad. Wow, we are going to be talking a lot more about it. And we're actually going to bring someone who knows what they're talking about to talk to us about it. So let's help. find out who our guest co-host for this episode is. Hi, I'm Dr. Sonia Benjafar from the Abdullah Al-Ghurair Foundation, and see you soon. Dr. Sonia will join us right here in studio. But first, Amy signed up for a first-hand experience learning about Indonesian cuisine at the newly opened Andaliman restaurant at The Link in Wan Zabil, offering a menu that blends traditional and innovation. Take a look. Get ready to tantalize your taste buds right here at Restaurant Andaliman. Join us as we explore the rich tapestry of Indonesian cuisine right here in the heart of Dubai. Let's jump straight in. What does Andaliman mean? And what is the secret behind this beautiful Indonesian restaurant? Andaliman, it's, um, Andaliman is a spice. Andaliman in Indonesian means pepper. It's a kind of pepper, so this is where the name of the Andaliman name for the restaurant came from. I lived in Bali for four years. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a regular customer of Andaliman mm -hmm. because obviously it reminds me of my time in Indonesia. Um, I have eaten in different Indonesian restaurants outside of Indonesia. And I must say that this is really authentic. I mean, the flavor that you have here is equally as like you have it in an Indonesian, let's say, Guarum, which is an authentic, you know, kind of a casual, Indonesian cafe. And what what is it unique about Andaliman? Here, for example, in this one, what is very unique is that we introduce kind of a, a sambal sommelier. You mm -hmm. know, uh, a sambal, it's, it's, it's a mix of ingredients that you prepare to do, uh, you know, to serve with some kind of fishes. Mm -hmm. Very famous fish we do here is the jimbaran, uh, charcoal coconut grill. So, you know, you have a, the waiter that comes with these eight different uh, sambals and then we made it for you in front. So this is something quite different to other restaurants. Mm -hmm. The chef behind the scenes of the restaurant, which is a consultant, is married to an Indonesian uh, lady. He's actually Italian. They obviously spend a lot of time in Indonesia. So they had this idea of creating this concept, which is Andaliman, bring it here to Dubai and use, as we mentioned, the authentic recipes, but in an elevated way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they went to find all the products, all the different, all the recipes, and it's quite interesting because you have an, in, an Indonesian lady, but an Italian chef. I 
I've truly enjoyed exploring the vibrant flavors of Indonesian cuisine. Everything from the nasi goreng to the rendang, it's been truly tantalizing. ABK, lucky lady. Food gigs, love it. <laughs> uh, now our co-host for tonight is a CEO of one of the largest philanthropic educational initiatives in the Arab world. Please welcome to DXB today, Sofa, Sonia Ben Jafar. Dr. Thanks. Sonia. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you, thank you so much. So tell us more about this initiative because we've seen a massive push uh, since uh, 2019 and the lockdown and all that sort of thing when it comes to online learning. Was that part of the, the growth? Um, I think it helped a lot, but we had actually started with online education in higher education at universities even before that because we really wanted to learn from kind of the best in the world. We were working with Arizona State University and MIT, and then we realized that we really need to build capacity here so that it can be contextualized for students in the MENA region. So this was established to improve uh, the access to quality education for the Arab youth. In your opinion, why is it important to equip uh, Arab youth with quality education to prepare them to be future leaders? We have such a special group in this region. We have a very high unemployment rate and we have a very high youth bulge. And these young people are hungry to learn and they're hungry to work and they're hungry to contribute. And if we don't have quality education that helps them be ready for the workforce, which of course includes online components, and we've seen that very recently, um, we're simply not doing enough for them so that they will contribute to their communities. Well, Dr. Sonia, it's, you know, uh, as you say, you've been starting since 2019. 2020 came along and there was a big push for remote working, remote learning. It suddenly became widespread worldwide. Four years on from that, or five years on, are we seeing that it's the same quality of education? Are we seeing that there's any improvements or there are still some downsides to distance learning? We are seeing such great strides in the region. Um, we are working with nine universities here in the UAE and the Ministry of Education. We've just signed with the University of Sharjah where they have 19,000 students who will be enjoying hybrid courses. Um, with our help, we'll be helping the institution. And they're really hungry. They want to have that option to learn anywhere. And that's, and that's what institutions need to provide and they are moving forward to it. Is it possible already, or will it be possible, for students outside of the UAE to get a UAE level of education from overseas? It is almost possible. Almost possible. Almost possible. We're almost there. Um, but this, <coughs> this quality standard that the UAE has with their forward-facing vision, with the generative AI becoming just ubiquitous with all of our work, that's going to infuse into our programs and we're going to have, I think, a lot of individuals in the region wanting to get a piece of that kind of high quality education that's future focused. So your online programs, they go across the world? They could, mm. um, but they're not ours, I have to say. We're supporting institutions. So it's the University of Sharjah, the American University of Sharjah, Khalifa University is a very big partner of ours. And they've looked at how to take health and safety for construction and for engineers and put that online so you could get an online certification for that, which is very important <coughs> in the Gulf region. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> would you say this is open to everyone? So for example, applicants who have been displaced or refugees, will they have access to this education? So we work very closely with our partner universities to make sure that there are seats available for the disenfranchised or disadvantaged youth. And so our hub in the American University of Beirut um, has been doing very well with that. And we have um, over a thousand young people in there. All right, well, we are focusing on distance learning. Sometimes you have to use it. We mentioned the floods earlier as well. Um, but uh, is it better to have a fully online system or does hybrid model work better? Does the online learning supplement what we're doing in schools and universities? Yeah, I think like anything else, it all depends on your context. In certain contexts, you want it to be 100% online. In certain contexts, you want it to be hybrid. And we've seen this even in the workforce. Some of us want to work 100% online sometimes, depending on the context, versus 100% um, in class or at work, and some kind of hybrid of that. The 
the idea of having options that can actually be constructed so that it will satisfy the needs of the context and the needs of the student, that or the worker in this case, I think that's the future. It's not about A or B, it's about which one A to Z? Yeah. Which combination of A to Z do you want? Yeah, I mean, well, we are talking education. If we're talking education and learning and going specifically down that route, then that's what we should be discussing, not necessarily the whole social aspect. Because that's, that's part and parcel of why people go to establishments and places, is to ha obviously have that, that social aspect as well, and that helps people learn and so on and so forth. Uh, but if you're talking about a specific line of education, then online's the way. Are there any exciting projects that are coming up that we're looking forward to? Um, so we've been working so much with individual universities and experts from around the world. Um, I'm looking forward to building a bigger consortium in the region for the region. I think that we have so much to learn from one another here and teach the rest of the region, but also the world about, you know, we, this is Dubai and this is the UAE and we have a lot to show on when we decide to really give and when we decide to help others grow, it really does work and you can see impact. We have over 13,000 students who have been benefiting from the online learning programs we've been supporting and we anticipate that that number will grow exponentially now that we've really gotten the ball rolling. And so I think that we'll be seeing a lot of bigger networks connecting together and really elevating everybody, the whole ecosystem. Well, Dr. Sonia, why don't we make this network a little bit bigger and get one of our next guests on. So sit tight and we're gonna be back in just a second. But coming up, we are bridging the gap between knowledge and real world skills with the CEO of the online school. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 